Greetings, everyone, um, from the original lands of the Coast Miwok, uh, otherwise known as San Rafael, California. What I will say is that I have been part of the U.S. settler-created philanthropic industrial complex for the past 25 plus years. Um, my roles have tended to be on the edges um, because I like to see within and across and like the multiplicity of all of the experiences. I have worked with many foundations over the years and being in California. So my history with philanthropy is one in which I studied it in school and also have watched it grow and expand over the past couple decades, including the role of consultants to foundations, which didn't exist when foundations first showed up. Um, I think what is common across the varied roles that I've had is that I've been increasingly, always been interested and in, increasingly interested in the self-made constraints and conventions that limit what's possible, um, and particularly for the multiplicity of experiences that we all have as humans and identities. And maybe that's because I'm a black, cisgender, heteronormative woman, but I know for sure that the rules of this land weren't designed for me or by me. And so as I get older, I get more and more serious about making that known and having people be more comfortable with understanding how we got here and how it's really our responsibility to move someplace else for as long as we're here. Perhaps what I'm most known for publicly is the Equitable Evaluation Initiative. Um, and in fact, our uh, special issue was just released um, where it really speaks about a body of work that I started. Well, it was 2014. And it's 2024 and much is different and also much is the same. And so I think when the paper came out, which was co-written, um, it was perhaps the first time in this kind of article, this kind of uh, journal, where we actually looked at evaluation, not as a thing that couldn't be touched. And there was an acknowledgement, at least in that initial paper, around humans, because we talked about capacity and competency. We talked about the capacity of the org and the competency of the humans to actually engage in evaluative practice that centered equity. And it was a capacity building approach. Um, shortly thereafter, uh, we did some additional research and we actually introduced the equitable evaluation framework. Um, and that was the one where I think um, we actually put a moral pin into evaluation. And again, lots of things were happening in the world at the time, right? We can no longer ignore all the isms um, that are deeply embedded in this land uh, that we inhabit and share with other beings. Um, and so I think as we continue to reckon with the realities of our world that are all person-made for the most part, um, this question about how do we know what we know continues to surface. And I think that paper and then the subsequent work around in the um, What's Race Got to Do With It, the American Journal of Evaluation, the Equitable Evaluation Framing Paper, the Equitable Evaluation Initiative, like that paper led to a different body of work, which continues to resonate with folks around there's something fundamentally not quite right or not quite appropriate about how we know things. And evaluation is a weird beast in that it's one of the only places where we use words like rigor, objectivity, and validity with such fierceness and also a lack of understanding of where they came from and what they meant in the original place in which they were designed to be used. So I think it offers folks a peek into something they hadn't quite thought about because they didn't know they could. <laughs> because I thought it just came from on high and this is just what it is forever. And once they get a little deeper and they go the places where I went, they're like, oh, as I like to say, they have a aha moment and then an oh no moment. Um, and then they have an oh my moment, which is it's all the humans. Knowledge doesn't come from other places. It comes from how we generate it. Um, and I think the more we are inundated with all these inputs, social media, everything, AI, there's an increasing awareness, attention, and desire to be more honest about what we know and don't know, who we consider to be valid and not valid, and just to be more forthcoming. 
So I think the more we struggle with our realities, the more we're interested in who's creating the stories that tell us our reality. And we are questioning whose voices are being heard and not heard and what that means.